Hello, hope you're all well. Um, I start all of these like that. Um, um, what do I want to say? I don't know how f***ing YouTubers do this. Right, when all this kicked off, when the world started falling apart and the wheel came off and whatever other term you want to use for the current situation, um, we started having to think about various bits of content that we could put out just to try and keep the conversation going between us and our clients and whoever else might take an interest in the kind of work that we do and that kind of stuff. And one of the thoughts that came up was that doing podcasts might be an interesting thing to try. Never done one before, um, but we ran with the idea and I started thinking about the kind of people that I could potentially talk to uh, that might have interesting things to say that we could share with you or whatever else. And I'm, one of the first people that came to mind um, is an old mate of mine, Dan Lord. Um, and I'll tell you why I thought of Dan, first of all. It's because, without blowing too much smoke at him, um, he has, in my opinion, one of the most unfaltering and enviable positive attitudes that I've ever known in somebody uh, for their work. Uh, Dan is a photographer and a video producer, um, but he's got a personality and a style um, that lends itself to his work and his clients in such a, a fantastic way. And I wanted to talk to him and share that conversation with you. Um, to try and keep my spirits up um, and to potentially help you keep yours up as well. I think this conversation is probably of more interest to maybe fellow creatives uh, and otherwise, but what it does is reaffirm that kind of idea that I think we all had when we first began the kind of jobs that we've got as video producers or photographers or makeup artists or whatever your creative outlet or profession is. Um, and that's because we loved, and we still do love, the work that we do but it's hard sometimes to stay in love with it all the time um dan on the other hand has always um got a smile on his face and i think that was why i wanted to talk to him first because he he certainly helped me in the conversation i had with him remember the fun and enjoyment that is to be had from the work that we do and remember as well that it won't be crap forever whilst we can't go out and shoot much at the moment we can still be creative um so yeah this is a chat between myself and dan lord from forecast designs i should warn you now it's quite a long chat um but i don't make any apologies for that dan's got some great stories um and it really was lovely spending time on the phone with him talking about his old projects still the the things that he's been up to over the years i hope you enjoy listening to me and dan having a chat and um yeah see what you think we're going to do a few more of these as well um i don't know what to get really excited about from my point of view with this it's just nice to talk um and hopefully you think it's worth listening to as well so here's my conversation with dan lord and listen dan thanks as well for taking the time to have a chat with me for this one i hope you're all well we'll catch you soon bye hello uh, how you doing mate you're all right i'm all right you got me Yes. Yeah. Is it all right? <laughs> yeah, I can hear you in the shed. I am. Yeah. I mean, I am. In the, yeah. I, I've hidden away. <laughs> so is that necessary? Uh, it is because there's so much sound going. It's, we've, it, the house is small. Like the downstairs bit is quite like a. Uh, uh, yeah. It's just it's just much easier and, and and quite nice. Quite nice to actually be on my own for once. Because that was your studio for a while, wasn't it? Your shed. The, the, yeah. 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 Yeah, it's um, it was yeah quite a while it was yeah. It was only about five years ago that I I stopped um, using it as a share, as a studio. How's your day been? It's been all right, mate. It's been all right. Can you hear me all right? Do yeah, you, yeah, yeah. I've got you. To... I've got you. Yeah, yeah. You're okay. You're okay. Yeah? So we'll, yeah, we'll just keep chatting. If you if you're comfy, you got a drink as well. I have. I've got wine and I've got brandy. I've got Ribena. <laughs> So, oh, right, okay. I'll have your brandy. Um, I've got, I've got the heater on in here. Is that, is it, is that? No, nah, no, nah, you're good. Away? No, you're good. That's all right. It sounds. Oh, I was trying to. Um, I was asked this um, today. I had to film. Um, uh, I'm doing like a, um, a Facebook live tomorrow. Yes. For, yeah, yeah. For but, milkshake. Yeah. Yeah, but I've actually done it. I've actually, I, I slightly, I wussed out a little bit, and I, I pre-recorded it because I just thought. You know, it's photography stuff going out to hairdressers, uh, and I just don't know how it would go for the first one. Because they've asked me to do a couple of things, so I thought if I just, I'll just do like a pre-recorded one, 
so I can just get a kind of a basis and get things right. <laughs> uh, and I can put overlays and put photos over the top and just sort of deliver a nice video package. It'd be better than if, I, you know, the fear of just tomorrow morning, just talking about photos to hairdressers and just seeing no one there, no one saying anything and just be like, does anyone actually care? Of course they do. Of course they do. I think you're uh, you're overthinking that, to be honest with you, mate. <laughs> Well, we'll see how it goes. We'll see how it goes. Yeah, exactly. crazy times. <laughs> well, listen. I mean, I'm already recording. As long as you're all right to chat, we'll just go from here. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, nice yeah. one. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I was trying to trying to work out in my own mind how we um how we uh started all of this. I sent you some notes about the kind of things that we were uh, we could talk about because when I first knew you, I think yeah, um, you were a graphic designer more than a photographer and video producer or maybe i'm doing you a disservice yeah. there no yeah absolutely yeah it's um yeah my my background's marketing marketing graphic design my, my dad's had a marketing agency up until uh the good old credit crunch yeah. <laughs> so yeah i mean he's 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 now doing um he's now doing his own his own thing just consultancy and so that so he's still going i think it's one of those things he doesn't want to give it up it's it's like what he always said to me was you know, people retire and they take up their own, they take up things like, they take up photography or they take up doing art or whatever. I mean, my dad's done art, he's done all that. For him, his, what he does is, is, is still, it's still interests him. Yeah. So he wants to keep it going. You know, he's, he's probably well over his retirement uh, age and much to my mum's my dismay, he's, he's still going for it because <laughs> he loves it. He loves it. And he still throws, he still throws me work and you know, it's, that's, that's fantastic. Yeah. And he's, you know, it's the thing that keeps him going and uh, it's very honorable really. Is that but, what, yeah. So that's where so it that, came from for you. Was it then? Absolutely. Yeah. Yeah. My, um, he, uh, yeah, it's, he never offered it to me on a plate. And I do remember I used to have, I, I asked quite a lot of times, you know, hey, do you want to just let me just? And at the time, I was massively underqualified for it, and I'd just be like, <laughs> hey, do you want to just come and let me? Because it sounded like a cool thing to do. And like, yeah, do you want to come and just let me just come and make graphic stuff and do whatever? And I knew, at that, you know, I had Photoshop on my computer. That was it, and I just thought Photoshop meant I can do whatever I liked. <laughs> so he said, he said no, he said no, not until you can actually, until the day that I think it's good enough, and you know, I can't just take you on for no reason at all. So I, I respect him for that. At the time, I was like, what? <laughs> but yeah, I, I respect him big time. Uh, but that's, it's, I mean, the, the, the graphic design thing, that came in late. That was, I was, I reckon, maybe my 20s. It was yeah. 23 or something when I started, when I started to do it and take it seriously. Um, and yeah, maybe even later. It was... Yeah, I've done all sorts. I was going to say, well, I mean, we could take a step further back than that. And before graphic design, because you and I have had a yeah. few few chats over the years, drinks and otherwise. Yeah. And uh, yeah. you had a couple of jobs before. And that, that, a few stories to tell as well that always made me laugh. Was it um, clothing shops and skate shops and that kind of stuff that you were working in at some point? Uh, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, yeah, I've kind of, I'm one of those, I've done a bit of everything, really. A bit of everything you could ever imagine. It uh, started with the paper round and <laughs> I never stopped. The paper round started when I was young and I was still doing the paper round well into the GCSEs, which was weird because I'd be out, you know, doing whatever teenagers do and then still getting up and doing the paper round at half five in the morning. <laughs> but, you know, it was a work, work ethic. But, um, yeah, I went from there. I went to do some clothing. I did a clothing company, uh, which was which was forecast clothing. Uh, How was it? So that was the yeah. the first the first uh, emergence of the name. Yeah, it was forecast clothing, forecast clothing, skatewear, and I just wanted a part of the culture because skateboarding was the thing that I did all the time. Everything and everyone around me was it was just skateboarding. That was a lifestyle, and I just I just really wanted to have a part of it. And I just I really at that time I absolutely loved Nottingham. I was so into it, and I was into the scene and everything that was going. I was, it was, I was, I was, at, um, I was at art college as well at the same time, and me and my mate set up forecast clothing, and it bombed big time. Hey, but you had a <laughs> moment, you had a moment though, didn't you, where you thought you were gonna, uh, when you were gonna make it. 
Was it, there was? I'm sure there was a story you told me about. Yeah, uh, yeah, we got we had we had a, we had a couple of times where the guy that I was doing it with at the time he went off to Fashion Week and took a load of samples with him, and we, it all became a bit of a whirlwind. When he got picked up, he he didn't go to sell. He just went to walk around and take the gear and just sort of we we thought nothing of it. But we he went there and got picked up by some guys. Next thing we knew, it was come and meet us in the centre of London in a jazz cafe of all things. Um, we went there and it was we were sort of promised the world, come back again next week and we'll take you to the factory and you'll get to see all the people that are working for us. It's like, what, like, what? What's going on? Took us to this place and they showed us the, the lines that they were producing for Disney. It was big, it was a massive place. Yeah. And we kind of thought, this is this is this is amazing, you know, this is this is really the one. Um and yeah, and and it we were kind of living the high life for for about a week, and then it all sort of fizzled. You know, I don't want to sort of bad mouth what happened, but our designs on a number of cases got kind of you know we got taken for a ride. We were dead young, and it happened with another couple of companies. I can't really say too much no, about no, course, that, no. really. Uh, yeah, and there's another there's another couple of instances, but I I can't really I don't want to. Uh, <laughs> don't you know. worry, don't worry. <laughs> so, but yeah, but that's when that was when my when I realised that actually it was the design side that I was really kind of getting into and. As much as I thought skateboarding is the culture, it's all that. It was actually I was thinking, you know, I'm sitting there, I'm sitting there all through the night. That's when my my start for working all through the night, staring at a computer screen began, mm -hmm. and it kind of got worse and worse from there. <laughs> <laughs> so I was I was getting more and more involved in the graphics and then stuff. Um, uh, the clothing company fell through. wasn't I was too young. I was too young, and I wasn't. I was living with loads of mates. We weren't really kind of. Um, I wasn't really business minded at the time. Yeah, I was very much just, yeah, I'll give people things for free. And we'll put on hip hop nights and we'll put on club nights and we'll sponsor skate events and just whatever we, because you know I was working in bars and stuff at the same time, and everything that I was making from working in bars, I was throwing into kind of just giving everything, giving my livelihood away, <laughs> was making, getting the clothes made, and then I was putting on nights and just giving everything away. <laughs> so that's kind of how I, <laughs> that's how I was operating. And that was bad. <laughs> <laughs> but you were having fun, though. That's the main thing. It was it was absolutely loads of fun. And I, I still coming across um, old photos that I'm pulling out of the cupboards. And it's uh, break um, break dance nights we, we're putting on, uh, things like that. And it looks cool. I still see the logo. I see the forecast designs. It used to be, I used to do it. It was written out like um, the Run DMC logo. Oh, yeah. So it was, it was, it was for... In fact, originally it was foremost. It was foremost clothing, oh, yeah. and then it turned to forecast clothing. Um, so yeah, so it did a bit of a switch. But yeah, that was it. And I still, I still see it. And I, I sort of think I, I pull out some of the old catalogues that I used to produce. I used to do it all on Photoshop. I didn't know anything about Creative Suite or InDesign or how to technically do things. <laughs> and in a way, I kind of like it because it, it's got a bit of a punk feel to it. It's got, a, you know, it, it's gnarly. It's not right. But it was, <laughs> it was really skate. It was right. what it was. <laughs> exactly. It wasn't right. So I look back at it and think, gee, oh, that is terrible. <laughs> uh, so yeah, but that that was that was that oh, pretty much that side of it. And then um, moved on to um, eventually started working in in studios, um, right. doing the graphic design. It was art working. It was mainly art working, which is. At the time, I liked it because it allowed me just to be told what to do. And I, I was picking up the basics of, you know, Photoshop, InDesign, Illustrator, everything like that. And I, st I was getting little bits of, of, um, of film work, but it was so long ago, I didn't realize the potential of what I was doing. I was just putting things together and I was cobbling together things in ways it shouldn't have worked. I was trying to, I was trying to make animation on... I was trying to make animated stuff on Final Cut because I didn't know any better. And yeah. It was really difficult. And I was just sort of ah, a nightmare when I think back to it. <laughs> but but I was I was given the opportunity and I was given the time and it was there. And you know, I, I dropped I never I didn't deal with anything film wise for a long time after that, but I didn't realise it at the time that I'd been been giving a bit of a you know, a bit of a a head start many, many years ago. Yeah. Because I wasn't, I wasn't even thinking about photography at that time. Um, it was just graphic design. Uh, then, unfortunately, my dad's 
company credit crunch came we were at the recession and i i i sort of i bowed out more than i sort of said you know i'm just art working here and it's not really I, i'm aware that i'm just here hanging on i don't mm-hmm. need to be here sort of thing uh and it was, it was a really sad time but then you know i went off on my own and it kind of it kind of went in a good way from there i'd say uh, luckily, I went into a few other agencies around Nottingham, where Victoria Creative, Diversity, and a few others, and I was freelancing to them. Yeah. And I was also freelancing at home, and yeah, it, I was getting. It, when I think back to it, I liked it at the time, but I was really scratching around for money. It was, yeah. it was, it was all the classics. Is ever anything that was all the classic stuff you would ever get, which was you doing, you doing. Um, club night posters band yeah. posters cd artwork for people and it's you know I, i've got 15 pounds for you if you can do me a poster <laughs> which would take me about six hours and you go thanks and then you'd be chasing the 15 quid for about a month <laughs> afterwards like can i have my 15 pounds please or the real one the one that always kicks you in the nuts is it will look good for your portfolio can i have it for free uh, that's the classic I'm still, I'm, st- I'm still getting it'd be good for your portfolio now people you know, still, you know, <laughs> you know what it's not I'm, I'm not, guilty I'm of that. Ungrateful. I'm guilty of that, Dan. I, you you did some work for me, which I think I couched to you as which, it'll be for your portfolio. For where's Wallace? You did our posters and, and artwork for yes. for all of that. Yeah, but the thing <laughs> is, the thing is, I will always take stuff on. I'll, I'll never. I always have, and I always will take stuff on if I think it's fun or I think it's yeah. got something to it. I I just love it. Like I'm I'm into I'm into all. I still do, I do it all the time. Every single day, people just go, um, I've got this idea. What do you think about it? Yeah, I'll do that. Oh, uh, I'm going to make this thing this. Yeah, I'll do that. Even if it means staying up all night. Um, I've just I've just uh, agreed to um, this morning. I'm, I've am i wrote myself into dressing up. I've got a um, a full-size rabbit costume that I picked up from a car boot sale about a year ago. Yeah. And I, it's in the shed. I'm looking at it right now. Actually, I tried it on earlier, and I <laughs> put on the on the village page. I put, um, "Hey guys, um, I've got like a rabbit costume. I feel it's a bit harsh on all the kids being stuck in at Easter. Would anyone like me to sort of walk around the village and wave at their houses?" <laughs> I did that this morning at six in the morning, thinking oh, no one's going to say a word. Mate. It's properly blown up. It's blown up, and now it's like, "Can you come to this? Um, can you come to this retirement home? Can you come and do this?" And I've. I've got to do it now. I've got, well, to, I've got this rabbit costume and I'm about to walk around the village waving at everyone, going, woo! <laughs> and I'd like to think that would teach you a lesson, Dan, but I suspect that as much as you love everything that you do, you'll just keep doing it. So, <laughs> uh, Yeah, probably, yeah. I mean, if it's funny, that's the thing, if it's funny. Of course. I'd, I'd rather be doing these things than, like, when I'm, work, when I'm working, I'm, if I'm editing at night or I'm, or I'm designing something or whatever, it's artistic and it's, for me, it's a bit of a flow. It's creative... Like the the Where's Wallace stuff was was it was it it spanned across all kinds of different things. We're doing so many different things. Yeah, yeah. Um, and, I, and if I'm honest, I, I didn't know what that was going to be or become um, yeah. at that point. And I think when we sat down and spoke about it, yeah. you had carte blanche as far as I was concerned to go off and come yeah. up with. I think it was Kim, your wife, who actually even came up with yeah. the name Where's Wallace. Over yeah, a beer was, yeah. in the orange tree in Aylesbury. All I knew yeah. was that I was going to walk all this way and raise money for Cancer Research UK. Yeah. Kim coined the name, and yeah. then you just went off and, and came up with what you wanted to, which I was yeah. more than happy for you to do. But the whole way that you did it, I think, on reflection, and you know, at the time I thought this as well, actually, it set the tone for what it needed to be. And yeah. it, it needed to be fun. It didn't need to be serious. It needed to be me you know, not being daft as such, but taking each day as it came and having a bit of a laugh along the way and trying to inject that sort of personality. And if I'm honest, then I think that did come from that, that yeah. round of design work that you did and the, and the artwork and stuff that you came up with for the posters. That was definitely yeah. set the tone for it all. Yeah. I mean, that, that was good fun. That, that was, that was probably when I was, when I first started doing the freelance stuff, I think, wasn't it? Yeah. Most it, it feels to me like it was, it would have been but 2011. That, that would have been, yeah, so quite yeah, God, yeah, it's quite a while ago. Yeah, but that was it. It was it was those things that were coming in that were interesting because it's stuff that if you if you work if you take on a project that's quite that's interesting and you and the person you know the the people that you're doing it for are open to allow you to 
take things in any direction you want. I mean, you were you were metaphorically you were wandering around in every direction you wanted. So the the, yeah. the design side it followed that. It's just like you know this this is just going to happen. Uh, wasn't wasn't the phrase wandering and w- wandering what? and wandering around the countryside that's it. or something like that? That's I it. still remember it. Yeah. I mean, that's two thousand one. I still remember it. <laughs> yeah, and it was yeah, and that that was that was it was nice. I remember that. Yeah, there was there was people. There was a lot of stuff that went on at that time that was funny enough i still i still probably work for most of the people now yeah. from from that era they still 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 do it it's moved on a bit uh, some of it i've had to drop off just because it's like hey i can't still keep doing posters for 15 quid <laughs> because <laughs> it, it, uh, the design side kind of just it's dropping off anyway it's naturally just falling off because it takes me too long it takes too long for me for, for how fast the, my work is moving at the yeah, moment. Yeah. It, design takes too, it's, it's too long a process. Uh, so yeah, so that's, that's how that, that's, that's what happened to design. It kind of dropped off. And when did you start um, picking up a camera then? When was, I mean, cause obviously I, I working as you yeah. did in design, you had an appreciation for, for photography yeah. and, and yeah. sort of an extension of that into video and everything else, particularly, mm. I guess, with the kind of interests uh, and hobbies that you had like skating you know, skate yeah. culture really grabbed hold of the whole homemade yeah. video side of things. Uh, uh, yeah, with, that is true. With yeah. real gusto. So I figured yeah. there's a real connection there for you. Yeah, I, yeah. I mean, I did. You, I used to have an old. Um, oh, I can't remember what you call the cassettes. It was like a mini, mini DV. Mini DV. That was it. Yeah. yeah, I've still got the videos. In fact, it's. I used to. I used to record the skating and sort of sketches. It was all crash edited. It was just you know start stop start stop on the camcorder and just i've still got them yeah. uh i've got there's two films that are two hour long films that i was last year looking into getting converted digitally and played at the broadway and getting everyone that's involved i mean this is it goes back to 1998 i think uh oh, and they're well. pretty <laughs> some of it, it's you know it's, it's all over the place but that was I mean, that, that was years ago and i never really thought anything of it. i knew I, it was i knew it was always something that i liked was having the camera and being involved the involvement it allowed you to have but then i i completely forgot about it and i went down the design route but when i was at art college i thought i i was on the i went down the fine art route again because it was kind of throwing paint around and it was being more expressive rather than design was completely completely off my radar i had no interest in design for me it was too too pedantic too limited strict and it just it just didn't go of how i felt and to end up being an art worker is like the pinnacle of um you know you've got to it's so technical and there's rules and it's it kind of the more i think about it the more it goes against what i'm what how my brain works yeah and i still when i take on design work now i still it still comes to even down to the the saving of files and how how everyone works design respect to people that are like that because i think it's a more of a mathematical side of the brain rather than a sort of out there creative side mm. not saying it's not creative because it is massively but um what i was finding was whilst i was sitting there designing i was kind of fantasizing about just being able to do creative stuff quick move it on get on with it you know design yeah. create something quick move on create something quick move on uh and naturally with the freelance stuff i started needing images and to add into brochures i was doing for people caught even like corporate stuff was needing images and the amount of time i was searching through like shutterstock and all the big major websites for images it was painstaking it was killing me i was like i could just because i'm quite i'm quite impatient when it comes to things like that yeah like i could just if it's just a camera i'll just take a picture of a blooming glass of water that's what i need i can just take it and be done you know what i mean i'll just do it and move on so then I started thinking, well, I will. I'll, I'll do that. I'll, I'll, I'll get the images that I need and I'll take them myself because I don't have time for this messing around and I'm paying someone else to do it. Yeah. Um, so, you know, that that started coming like that. And then my friend that I went to art college with, really, really good friend, uh, he was in, he'd moved to New York and he was working for um, Splash Paparazzi. Uh, and he, we were in constant contact and he said, you know, we're, we're moving from 
Nikon cameras to Canon cameras. We've got loads of them going. Oh, they're old ones, but there's loads of them going. Do you want me to just send you a couple over? I was like, yeah, yeah. Like a single <laughs> camera. That sounds, that sounds wicked. He sent over some cameras and they came with sort of, I don't know, stock lenses. They were good cameras from the time, but they're old. Yeah. And I remember they he sent me one over. I was like, this is cool. I've got a camera. I have absolutely no idea how to use it. Uh, and I, I just used to go out and I remember I used to take, I used to go out and take photos of roofs a lot, like roofs of houses. I didn't know what else to do. I was just like, I've got to take photos of things, got to take photos of things. <laughs> so it was always like, I, I was, I was like, Oh, I'll work out how to use silhouette, how to get silhouettes and roofs. And it'd be really artistic. And I, you know, I, I was doing it for nothing really. I was just, just, I just wanted to be able to take photos. Yeah. Uh, and I started to realize that it, what that was the thing I liked because it's, it sounds bad, but it's, you can, you can, you can have the moment it's done. You've, you've done your art and then it, that's it. It's the, that's the end of it. Do you know what I mean? It's, it's been done and that's the end. Mm. Whereas with graphic design, it, it, it dragged too much for me. It's, it was just like, take your photo. Is it right or not? Move on sort of thing. I think that makes sense. I, I, I yeah. see what you're saying. Yeah. And I think there's something as well about yeah. the, um, for, for a creative like yourself, mm. uh, the challenge of getting it right as well, mm. you know, mm. of, of being able to, yeah. to get that shot the right yeah. way and like you say yeah. and then have the scope to go on and do something else after that i think that that's yeah. quite liberating i suppose isn't it being able yeah to, it was to yeah like I, it was it was liberating but also because my my mathematical side has never been I, I still as a photographer i would say i don't technically know anything <laughs> Get <laughs> it's out just, of it. it's, i don't technically know anything and that is evident from this morning's um tuition that i was doing for um, hairdressers <laughs> how to use I don't technically, I, could t I, I know it, I know it all, but there's, you know, you, some people go down the real technical side of photography and they're like, you know, the, the rule of this is this. And if you do this, then it's this. And you have to times that by that to make that. Whereas I've never known that ever. And yeah. I, that's, I've just worked it from just doing it over and over and over again. And I know how it feels. And I remember when I first got the cameras and I remember sitting there and I was taking all these pictures, I get really frustrated. I thought, I wish I just knew maybe like five rough settings for different situations that I could just go to that was near about right. Do you know what I mean? Yeah. Cause I, I, I was, I was going out and I, I started sort of thinking, oh, I'm going to, I'm going to start doing band photos for people. I'm going to go out and do gigs and stuff. And I'd go out to events just for mates to help out. And I'd go out and that, because I didn't know what I was doing, I thought I knew and I'd have settings that I thought were right outside. I'd go inside to a dark room start taking the pictures using the flash and just my pictures were just coming out so terrible. Yeah. I was getting, I, I remember there's a, this, this group of guys, they, they grabbed me and they would, they'd be like, Hey guy, Hey, take, Hey photographer, take a photo of me, take a photo of, of us as a group having a good time. And I take the photo. I look, I look like I knew what I was doing. I had all the flash and massive camera and it was just a black screen. Cause I just <laughs> didn't know. I just didn't know. And they're going, Hey, come on, let, let me see the picture. Let me see. Do I look good and stuff? And I'm like, yeah, you gotta wait. You have to wait. <laughs> yeah, I'll email it to you. Yeah, yeah, I'll email it to you. <laughs> but that's it's kind of how my photography life went. I just was constantly. It was the feeling of being in too deep all the time, permanently. But in a way, I was pushing myself. So I was pushing myself too fast for what I could do. But I didn't mind because I just kind of had this backup thing of just I just say. You've got to wait and see the. If it went wrong, it'd just be like you've got to wait and see the pictures later. Oh, I love that, <laughs> and I still do it now. There's still occasions where you know, oh no, straight off the camera, that's not yeah. right. But, but, uh, <laughs> um, yeah, so that's that's kind of how it was. It was heading in that direction, really. And the video and the video stuff went alongside it as well. But obviously, you as a photographer, I think, am I right in saying you 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 do more photography work? now than you than you do video i know the video stuff you definitely do do and I'm, I'm a big fan of the stuff the the edits of yours that i see that you put out um, yeah but are you predominantly focusing on on the photography side of stuff at the moment um i well i'm a I, i'm a photographer yeah and that's what i've been doing for a, much much longer but the, the the video side of it started coming in when i i just started because the, the the camera that I've, the cameras that I've got invested in, it's just a simple switch between taking photos and videos. Yeah. So I was I was going to photo shoots for hair and fashion. Uh, in between doing the photos, I was switching to video and just you know just doing little behind the scenes videos. And 
a lot of the social media stuff I was doing, like the photo shoots is for social media. And, you know, I was, I was sending off work and I was trying to sort of upsell myself and saying, you know, for this price, you get this. But look, as a surprise, I've also done you this behind the scenes video. Uh, yeah. You can edit it. It's so much more forgiving. You can you can edit and cut anything that you've got, even if you're adding in a bit of phone footage, anything like that. You can just you can throw it in, put a bit of an effect on it and sort of grunge it up or whatever. Yeah. And if as long as it's headed down the right feel of the client, then they were kind of going, oh, my God, this is great. And at that time, video was so much more it was getting much more reach and more hits yeah. than photography seemed to be doing. And that's where the video side came from. And then the client started asking, you know, can we have photo and video? Can we just come and, can you come and do a video day? Can you come and do this? And then I started to realize that actually video, because I, I was, I was never really into film or video as a, as a media. Mm. And it was never something I really considered. And then I started thinking, actually, this is something that, I can see that iPhones are getting better. I can see that all the phones are getting better and better cameras. Um, the thing that might future-proof me is looking into the video side because it's not something that people have time to edit. Yeah. You know, the, like the, the editing side of video, people don't, they can't be bothered. Yes. They, they, they'll do Facebook Live or they'll do, you know, little videos that they record of, of what they're up to, but they're not going to sit back afterwards and start cutting and cropping and adding mm. transitions and, and and title overlays so that's i thought that's going to future proof me to an extent gotcha. Gotcha. <laughs> that's what i thought <laughs> i mean just uh, stepping back onto the photography side of stuff then it, yeah as much as you've described kind of how much you you love doing your your job and mm. i think the thing i notice most about the stuff that you do is is evident not just in the kind of things that you shoot um, but the way you shoot them as well and kind of the, the way you you post and promote yourself in your work, there is still yeah. that fun that it was clear you were having years ago making skateboarding videos with your mates. You've still yeah. got that now. And I, uh, I, yeah. I think the thing that strikes me as well, I've got some pictures here in front of me. Uh, the one that I've got up here now is the, uh, uh, the, <laughs> the shot you did of the dog with the glasses on and, yeah. the, uh, and the little outfit. And these are the kind of commissions and jobs that you – you seem to, I'm not going to say excel at, because you, you, you do well with all your clients. It's quite obvious. You, mm. You're t doing great work for a lot of different and varied people. But this kind yeah. of thing, I think, stands out as as very forecast designs, from my point of view anyway. I yeah. don't know the extent to which you agree to that or not. Yeah, thanks. Yeah, I mean, the thing, what the, what, what it was, was as I, as I got confident with my with the photography, not that I, it, it's taken me ages to, feel like I could walk into a job and go whatever lighting happens to me here whatever happens in this room I'm 100% gonna be confident that I will get the perfect shot every time yeah. it took me a really really long time and there's a lot really, lots of sweat sweaty moments but now now I can safely say I can go into almost any situation and I will be able to pull it off yeah and and that's something I feel really like you know studio lighting that that scared me that, that it was unpredictable uh which really people think studio lighting does one thing it's lighting and it makes life easy but it's not you know you either get in when you press a trigger it's right or it's wrong with, with studio lights it's too yeah. bright or it's not i had i had a, i had one of my jobs for a big client milkshake i probably, I probably shouldn't really because I, I a lot of it was pretending that i was much more in control than i was <laughs> <laughs> but very early on I, I ended up working for milkshake doing a job um down in i think it was exeter and they had all the um all the educators and stuff were there and it was a big day where they had an educator training day and they all got a photo shoot and they had models in and all this stuff and they got down there and i had to take the my backup studio lights I had to come down with me and i got there and i set it up and something happened on the, the remote trigger it wasn't the, the the metal inside had bent so it wasn't connecting on the battery right which meant it just wasn't triggering and they'd been, they'd spent all, they'd been, it was an eight hour model prep, uh, makeup. And then it came to, and oh, time to hand word. over to the photographer. It's time. So I had all the educators watching me. They'd done all the models were stood there. Everyone's watching the people that own the companies. Just nothing was happening, Like nothing was happening at all. And when it did, it was firing random 
like random intensity of light. <laughs> so I'm sitting oh, there mate. really, really sweating. Everyone's watching me and each picture is like overblown or it's under, um, underexposed. And it's just one of those... Just those kind of moments, your heart's absolutely sinking. And I just had to say, I've just got to walk away for a bit. <laughs> just took away. Yeah. I luckily managed to pull pull apart the parts of the thing and um, bend the bit of metal back. I worked it out, went back in, started firing off right. And I was actually really happy with the result in the end. But it was really, really sweaty. Really, really sweaty <laughs> moment. Really, really, really. But, oh, mate. But, yeah, but this, the thing is, going back to, like, um, what you're saying about how I feel about photography, my, my feel... I was, I used to go and do lots of, I, when I'm, I, I really wanted to do, fa I, I like photos of people in. I'm yeah. not really, I'm not really a landscape person. Uh, for me, I've always had it, I, I feel like there should be someone in there. If there's not someone in the picture, I, I, it kind of feels a bit irrelevant to me. I do, I do do some landscape, at least some animal pictures, you know, wildlife, mm -hmm. stuff like that. But I started, I started doing fashion and I started going to events, fashion events that I was allowed to go along to. And, I found for me it was it wasn't so much the images I was getting. I found it it was amazing that people were allowing people were giving me their time and trusting in me to do these images for them. And that's kind of became like a real feel for me, and I still have that now. That there's humans and people out there that have their their reasons for what they're doing and they're trusting in me to go and spend time with them because it's very personal you know if, you, if you're doing like a shot of a, of a model or you're doing a shot with someone who's who's a cosplayer or a wrestler yeah they're you're it's you and them and they are you, you're very quickly having to sort of work out who they are make them feel comfortable be a friend with them and then get a, a, a representation of what they do and who they are yeah in a photo to give back to them and it's a very it's a very lovely feeling when you when you work with people that you get on with. I, I, I don't think there's anyone that I work with or that I photograph where I've gone away and gone, oh, I didn't get on with them. Yeah. That was a bit weird. That wasn't very nice. It's it's always ended up, and, uh, you know, I've got, I can look through my social media pages and I can scroll through. And when I'm looking through, you know, if I go through, like, my fashion photos or stuff like that, each photo image isn't i just i don't just go oh that's a lovely photo it looks really nice i go that was a really nice moment that was a lovely person and all the stuff behind that photo was a really nice experience and i always think you know if if i've been if someone's come to my studio we've had a nice day together yeah and it's it's come across as nice stuff and just the feeling that people give me their time to photograph them is a, is something that i that i don't think i'll ever get over really it's quite quite a humbling feeling that's such a nice attitude to have mate honestly i think that's yeah. it, it speaks a lot to to you and your character to think about your work in that way and i you know I, as a, a fellow creative in some respects uh, you know yeah it's the kind of thing that we wish we all i guess had all the time and if i'm honest with myself yeah. i don't know that you know i i don't have that all the time necessarily no. because you know running the business well, and, and that kind of thing yeah. maybe takes your brain in different directions and that, but you seem yeah. to have always kept hold of that, which I think is, a, is to, massively to your credit, honestly. Yeah. Oh, thanks. Well, you know, my, my work isn't always, isn't always that side. A lot of it is, you know, photographing libraries or <laughs> machinery or socks, but yeah, I, I kind of, I like that as well. Cause it's a switch off. Cause the one-to-one, -one, you know, models, cosplay, wrestling, whatever it is, it's, it is intense. It, it burns you out by the end of the day. After the end of the shoot, it's 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 very um, personable. Yeah. Whereas it is it is nice sometimes to do it like a corporate video. And also, you know, when situations like what we're going through now, it's you you can fall back on the work that's more reliable and stable. Yeah. That isn't so cool and exciting. And maybe not the stuff that I'd post on social media all the time that's still there bubbling away and it allows you to carry on with doing the more uh what people might think is exciting uh edgy sort of stuff yeah i mean you, you so you've mentioned that wrestling cosplay 
uh, fashion, yeah. that kind of stuff. And you've obviously got commissions in each of those areas, whether you're shooting for money or for fun, I guess, yeah. on, on some of those things. Uh, is Attitude Clothing, I'm looking at a picture here. You, I've, I've seen you post a fair amount of stuff that you've done with them over the yeah. years uh, on the fashion yeah. side of stuff. There's the animal photography as well. And I've seen yeah. some some amazing pictures that you've put out on social of uh, parents that have brought their kids to you for, um, what do you call them, cake parties? Is that what it is? Yeah, cake smash, yeah. <laughs> cake smash. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> well, yeah, I mean, it's all it's all the pet stuff. Yeah. Uh, I, I found in my work, it's for some reason, I don't know what, I don't know what it is, it's, I get fluctuations of certain types of photography and, and it goes and they get like a wave of it and it gets really excited really, and then, then, you know, one way, one reason or another, it'll dip down again and something else comes up and sort of takes the, which is, which is really exciting as if your work can be like that, you know, you don't, you don't know what's going to happen next. And it, luckily it's always been something that's been very exciting to me, it, all these different things. I think it's because I've subliminally kind of pushed myself towards the stuff. I mean, I love wrestling. Mm. I really I like cosplay. I think it's the most interesting and most fascinating stuff. There's a few more subcultures that I'm looking into at the moment, which I'm sort of going to start delving into, which yeah, see what happens with that. Cause some of them's a bit kind of war, <laughs> yeah. but yeah, the, the pet photography was, um, I can't even remember how, I mean, obviously taking, I love dogs. So, I can't remember how it came about, but one thing led to another is all I can say. <laughs> and I started working for, how was the link? I can't even remember what the link was. I can't even remember how it came about, but uh, yes, it was. I remember what it was. Someone that I did, one of my clients that work in beauty, we started working on a project that got the work, the, the picture we're getting into Selfridges. This is it. And the, person that we were liaising at the time also ran a pet modeling agency right so that all came about very quickly it went from being beauty uh to i've got a pet modeling agency and i've got i've got a boston terrier pug cross who's she's pretty old she's getting pretty old and you know long in the tooth now but you know i was like well let me get some shots of her and um See if see if you want to put her on the roster, you know, give it a go. Why not? So I took the dog into the into the shed studio at the end of the garden and put at the time. This is yeah, uh, do you know, each story ends up being longer and longer and longer than I planned them be. <laughs> <laughs> Don't worry, I like listening to you, man. It's all right. <laughs> at the time, I had a. This is this weird, yeah. So I had um, uh, my window cleaner at the time was doing an urban and skate clothing brand for i think for like for like a children's uh it was like a scheme i think it was doing it as like a sort of um a youth working scheme but also incorporating this sort of urban skate wear range that he was doing right and we were getting chatting he was, he was an absolute amazing guy he was the best damn window cleaner i've ever had <laughs> such a nice guy but he started he, he left a load of beanies on my windowsill he like because the window was open, he was working. He just shoved a load through and went, "Here, this is for you." And there were it was cool stuff. And at the time, um, my wife Kim, she was going through wearing lots of big gold chains as like a, you know sort of like fashion uh, statements. So I grabbed them, got the hat. I was like, "This well, this is pretty cool, right?" I'm, I'm going to bang these beanies on my dog and take some photos and see what happens. Um, so I did, gave them to her. And the next day, he was like, "Oh yeah, um, you, I put your dog on the on the on the roster of um." pet modeling agency that's on the roster and also it's been picked up by daily mail and we've now got a feature that was it. on yeah. pe pets that look pets that look like celebrities and yours is um divvied up next to 50 cent <laughs> <That> <laughs> and sure it. enough it was in it, it was there it was it and um so it kind of they said that's fantastic can we start you know can we start using you as a, as a photographer like yeah of course you can yeah, uh, that's you know it's ideal work for me um, so the the dog with the glasses thing. The very next job I had with them was for Channel Five, photographing the UK's most intelligent dog, um, which was in Blackpool at six in the morning. Ooh. And they told me that the day before, so I had to get ready very quickly. And I woke up in the middle of the night. I was like, right, okay, it's time to go. At the time, my my studio at the time used to be underneath a pub. So I didn't have access to the my studio 
outside of pub hours. So it was locked up. And I woke up and I thought, it was, I don't know, what, three in the morning or something? And I thought, oh, my God, I've actually I've gotten some really essential lights. I have to go and get these lights. It's so important. I don't know how I'm going to get to the studio. The only thing I could think of was to drop through the beer hatch. So, so it was three in the morning. I went round to the pub round the corner from me, lifted up the beer hatch middle of the night, looking like a right, you know, middle of the night. I had a kid at the time, so I hadn't really slept very well anyway. Pitch black, got ready in the dark. Uh, dropped down the beer hatch. It was way higher than I thought, and I just landed in loads of ancient sort of beer cellar mould. Landed, I was wearing a white T-shirt, landed all in it. Thought, oh, it's okay, at least I've got the lights. Grabbed the lights, loaded them in the car, got to the job in in, um, in Blackpool. St- got there, and it was in a sports hall, but I had to set up a... What I what I thought was the job was that I was just taking photos of the, the dog that were going to be used in magazines or whatever. I got there, and they started micing me up, and I was like, what's... Uh, so what's all this about? And why, what's, what's the microphones for? Why is there a film camera here? Why is there a film crew here? Because I... You know, you don't need it. I'm just taking photos. Oh, no, no. I forgot to say, it's for Channel 5. Um, we're doing a documentary on the UK's smartest dog. Of and course. we're you, you're doing a dummy photo shoot. We're, we're going to interview you about... Um, we're going to interview you about pet photography, the, the rise of pet photography and how people treat their, their pets. And That's cheeky, pets isn't, it? Or isn't it? Cheeky? Uh, and I looked down at my T-shirt and I realised I was in this white T-shirt that was just covered in green mould. <laughs> uh, I hadn't even done my hair, didn't even have a hat on, I, and that was it. And the, it was aired on, I think, Christmas Eve. It was aired that Christmas oh, Eve. Mate. And it was just horrendous because I... It just, but again, you just, you know, you, you, you pull these things off and you go for it. And that just led on to loads and loads of pet photography from there. And it's always been great. And I've always enjoyed it. But... You know, it came from it came from a complete surprise. <laughs> That's amazing. That is amazing. <laughs> and then from from uh, clothing to dogs mm. to cosplay to wrestling and everything else. At some point, then you started developing um, a relationship with with hairdressers or, or barbers. Mm. Uh, one in particular that I know you do work with, and I'm going to probably pronounce his surname wrong. Sid, is it Sotung or Sotung? Yeah, it's um, I think Sotung. Okay. But he he himself doesn't even really know. Okay. Okay. <laughs> this is the interesting. That's the interesting fact. Um, he's a New York barber, and he's moved to Nottingham. Oh, is he American? The, I didn't realize he was from the states. Oh, is he's a proper. He's a proper original New York barber. He's, is he's he? Worked all, yeah, he's worked all over the world, and resided in Nottingham, and, and for some reason or other, absolutely loves it. We. I don't know why. It's just the thing that's <laughs> that's become his thing. It's very strange, but he's a he's a proper New York barber. He's always like, "Hey, Dan, we've got to get some really," and that kind of that's kind of what gets my gets the excitement going because yeah. he's like he's he's got the similar. Let's just film something today, have it edited by tonight, and get it out. And you know, that's it. There's no going back. There's no re-editing. There's, and that's really really how I like to work. <laughs> how did you meet him? Me. How, how did you actually get to meet? I mean, the Nottingham connection, the, obviously, but but where did you first come across each other? Yeah, the the hair the the hair stuff, the barbering, came from. I had no background in barbering or hair at the time, and I've always I've always done little side projects, whether it's little short films or little photo shoots of people. It's something that's always interested me, and I always feel like if you've got a day free. I'd rather do that with my, my my friends and have fun doing that than doing nothing. Yeah, yeah, you know, doing nothing is nice. That is lovely. But I, what what happened was was um, my wife. We just had our baby, and my wife was just starting to. She's she she does modelling for me, and she does she does you know she's always interested in creativity, and she also does makeup, and she does you know she's she's always around in the arts. And we were like, you know, come on, let's get, let's get back into stuff. You know, you know, you, we've you've been for a year, nine months of pregnancy, and you want to start this, have a bit of fun with a bit of getting behind the camera and doing stuff like that. So we set up with our friend uh, Penny Dreadful, a makeup artist. She she at the time wanted to do some prosthetics. She wanted to do some sort of goy prosthetics. Mm. You see, this is how this is how it's going from goy prosthetics into barbering. <laughs> 
so she wanted to do something with prosthetics and gore. Kim, my wife, wanted to do some acting. And I've got another friend who's a real extrovert and he also loves acting and having a bit of a laugh. So he said, right, let's let's do a kind of like, um, let's do a sort of barber, like a sort of brutal barber photo shoot where it's like, you know, a sort of Jack the Ripper-esque. He's cutting hair with a pair of giant shears uh, and Kim will be the sort of damsel in distress. And, you know, it's all very like, uh, and sort of scalped hair look and all this sort of thing. Let's just go for it. It's just funny. Um, at that time, I was just started, just starting to do a little bit of um, promo work for Vidal Sassoon. And they've got an empty um, floor above their salon in Nottingham. And they said, yeah, it's derelict. It's, it's unused. Go ahead. Just go and use that space. And so we did that. Filmed a little video. Did a couple of photos. I think I've, I might have supplied one of them to you. Mm. Um, and just did that as a, a real, a genuine mess about. I don't even know if I've still got the video anymore because it was just, you know, disposable. Just do it. Have a laugh. Laugh about it. Go for a drink afterwards. Move on. A few days later, unbeknownst to me, Sid had moved to Nottingham and he was asking for photographers and videographers to work with closely for lots and lots of projects. And my friend had seen the video that I posted up and sent it to Sid. And I got a message from Sid out of absolutely nowhere saying, hey, is this Dan? Forecast Designs, Dan? Yeah. Um, yeah, I mean, I'm, I'm looking for a photographer and a, and a videographer. And um, I mean, yeah, I mean, like, there's lots of photographers out there, and, but they're all doing the same thing. And I've been sent this video and it's like some kind of brutal barber kind of look thing. And you've got the, you've got the barbershop quartet music put over the top. And I kind of like the style. Do you want to come and have a talk? So I came in the next day and I talked to him about it. And we've never we've never stopped working together since. We've been what two or three days a week. We're doing stuff, um, and that really was just a massive floodgate into yeah. into hair and barbering. I didn't know that, photo- that um, barbering was as big as it was. I had no idea. I, it was a culture I was completely unaware of. Mm. Uh, I, was, I was going straight to all the big shows, so it was like um, Barber Connect. All, all the big stuff. I was going to all the hair shows, so like Salon International, everything like that. And yeah, and, and Sid has always been really, really good to me. He's just, we've just gotten so well and he's always pushed me. He's always pushed to everyone that he works with. He's always gone like, you know, Dan's, Dan's the guy, Dan's the guy. Uh, and yeah, and he gives me absolute free reigns. A little bit scary sometimes because every time I do work, I go to see him and he's I'm like, so what's the plan? It's like, Dan, you just do your thing. I'm going to do this. Make it look fucking cool, okay? And I'm like, right, okay, okay, right. So, you know, we, it's, and luckily, he just goes with everything ever, and it, it really allows me to do what I want to do. Um, I, I, so, yeah, I mean, the hair, yeah, the hair thing with, has just gone, it's just gone. That's, that's a line of work. Everything else has come and gone. Not come and gone, it's come blown up and then sort of mellowed a bit but the the hair side of stuff is just kind of like i don't know it, did it take you by surprise it, 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 was it i mean what what strikes me dan is that there's a there's kind of a a subculture theme almost to some yeah. of your to your work and your interest and your i mean you, you quite rightly mentioned that the some of the bills get paid with the the more corporate to use one of mm. your terms ploppy stuff Maybe there's, yeah. there. <laughs> you know, the, but that's a, that's a fact of life. You, you know, you, you're going to have to do those things, but there does seem to be a real kind of subculture thread to, to yeah. your work as well. Uh, yeah. Well, yeah. I mean, I suppose it's the things that's exciting to me. Um, I mean, you can work the, the working in the hair stuff. That's it's for me at the moment. It's, it's beautiful for me because I've got so many lovely connect. I've not, I've not in, in what I do in my work to say it's photography, it's modeling, it's hair, it's beauty. It's all these things. I've not had, I've not encountered or had one bad run in with anyone in the industry. And I feel really, really lucky and blessed for that. Everyone, everyone that I work with are just beautiful people and lovely. And I've never had, I I don't know if it's just, I've just caught everyone on a good day. I don't know, but it's been like that. But the hair side is somewhere that's creative, but there's also enough money in it to 
feel safe with it. Mm. And there's there's different sides of it. There's there's sort of aggressive um, fashion shoots of hair, and then there's also doing tutorials, making tutorial videos, and there's um, photographing and videoing events. So the same company is offering multiple things for me. Yeah, and that that's just it's just really really it's just it's a very lucky business to be in and everyone seems to be it's much smaller than you think it is mm. like you you end up coming across the same people and working it all ties together in a really nice way it's a it's a it's a really nice industry but the yeah the the, the subculture side of stuff um it's just stuff that i'm interested in like the cosplay the alternative wear all this sort of thing it's just stuff that it's people that are passionate about what they're doing yeah and it makes for great pictures. Like, you know, I've, I pushed down the wrestling side. I'm, a, I'm an old wrestling fan anyway, but I, I, I started getting into wrestling a long time ago more because I was thinking these, all these people like the UK wrestling scene, they're really interesting extroverts mm. and no one's, no one's going down the line. No one's, no one's investigating into this. And I sort of thought, these people would make amazing um, subjects for photo shoots because they're extroverts. Yeah. They all have their own characters. They, they, someone can be dressed as a demon one day and the next person comes in that works for the same wrestling federation and they're, they come in dressed as a Christmas pudding <laughs> because that's their, <laughs> that's their thing they do. You don't know what's going to happen. You, you watch WWE or whatever and, you know, it's, 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 it's an entertainment level to the maximum. Like you'll never get that anywhere else in the world. So I thought these guys are going to make really interesting subjects for photographing. And so that's where that came from that. And that, and they were, <laughs> and true to form they were, and I still photograph them now. A lot of the time I do it for free just because I think it's amazing what they're doing and they yeah. work for not a lot of money, not a lot of money anyway, but it all crosses over and it's all, everything crosses over culturally into each other's bits. And, I take what I've learned from doing the wrestling photos or the cosplay stuff. I'll take that into the hair stuff or I'll do a fashion shoot and I'll use some of the stuff that the cosplayer left behind at a shoot and I'll bring that into a fashion shoot. You know what I mean? It all, it all goes in from one thing to another and I'm secretly doing it because I really like it. And every now and then I get to meet a wrestling hero of mine <laughs> because I've worked up to that point and I can go, yes, I met Brett the Hitman Hart and I photographed him. And that's amazing. <laughs> of course it is. Blimey. Yeah. Man. So so every now and then for my own personal gain, I sort of push things a bit harder and go, I'm going to work and work and work until I get to meet that person because there's no other way on earth I'm ever going to meet them unless I keep doing that oh, mate. through my photography. <laughs> oh, it is. So I'll do that. It's, it is amazing. <laughs> what, what are you keeping busy, uh, busy with at the, at the moment then? With, uh, with things as they are. Um, yeah. You know, obviously... I was talking to a, another camera operator earlier today, Guy Jenkins, and um, yeah. obviously the, the thing that we're all experiencing at the minute is this sense of having our wings clipped, not being able to go out mm. and shoot and do anything. Mm. Um, mm. And I, th I I figure you, you're keeping yourself busy. You, you, you're still posting online. I'm, just, I'm seeing stuff that you're putting out on Facebook yeah. uh, and stuff like that because you've got, you've got a studio tucked away in the middle of nowhere almost that still gives you an opportunity to do product uh, photography and stuff like that. Is that right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, yeah. I, I've always, yeah. I've always tried to keep backup lines of work and stuff that I still think is really, really cool, but wouldn't be so outwardly exciting, but has an underlying value to it. So clothing companies like with Attitude Clothing, I, I do. What, what happened was when I had my first daughter, she didn't sleep ever. <laughs> she never slept <laughs> till she was four and a half. She didn't sleep. Yeah. So most nights I'm, I'm lying in mainly on her bedroom floor, lying on the floor or I'm somewhere awake and I just used to work all night long. But I just start thinking, I'm just going to, just for the sake of it, I'm just going to message all the companies that I don't think has very good social media uh, presence. Uh, the image is not quite right. Whether it's uh, fancy, I did a lot of fancy dress companies. I used to just be like, I love fancy dress. It's great. And looking for like different ways into stuff, things that people weren't looking at at the time. So like fancy dress companies, 
you think the scope of getting some interesting the stuff that fancy dress companies could supply to you to make amazing photos with mm. that aren't just going oh look there's someone dressed up as super mario you could you could go it's super mario but i'm gonna make it crazy and do a crazy photo shoot with it no one else has done that do you know what i mean yeah um so i was messaging people all night long just sort of hey uh, my name's dan of forecast designs just if you ever want to collaborate on a photo shoot i'll do it for free so, you know and the amount of work I generated from doing that was was quite unbelievable, really. And I took a few sort of hunches on bigger companies like Attitude Coving, who do have very nice social media, who do have really nice websites. They've been going a long time. They've, they've been doing stuff. And, you know, they messaged back and like, hey, Dan, yeah, cool. Um, yeah, brilliant. We're going to get some stuff out to you next week. It's like, oh, that's, <laughs> that's great. OK, thanks. And they're sending stuff out. And, yeah, it's Attitude Coving. They've been going a long time. It's alternative wear. From the outside, it looks really exciting and cool. A lot of the time, it's just putting clothes onto mannequins, taking photos, <laughs> doing it again. I, I did a I did a Facebook live the other day. I know, I saw it, because, and it but, but that's that's yeah. you though, isn't it? That's that's just to show that it's quite boring. I, I kind of wanted you to say, "This is how boring it is." <laughs> no, I think that's I, that was exactly what I think I was expecting of you at that point. <laughs> to be honest, I think I think I'm going to do a more exciting one where I get like. Um, quite an interesting thing to photograph and i would say you know let's talk about it and let's talk about why i'm doing these things but you know that was i think it was more boring than i realized when i when i set it up and i started taking photos of the same trousers but in different colors about five <laughs> times over i thought yeah i don't think people are going to be i think people are going to be quite bored of this so i kind of gave up but it's, <laughs> you know it is what it is but with attitude you know for example you do attitude and you're doing photos of them um their their product pictures which are in that that's stable money and they've still sent me stuff through at the moment i'm still getting stuff in that's because deliveries can come in and i i did ask for like when it, when i first saw this happening i messaged all the companies that i do product pictures for and said just to let you know i reckon we're going to have a bit of a situation where you know we, we're not gonna be able to get much work done if you want to send me loads of stuff i'll come and get it I'll get it delivered. I'll come and collect it. Mm. I'll stash it all because my studio is at the end of the garden, and I can probably work through it. Over, the, I've got a feeling it's going to be this going to be a long haul, and loads of them went for it. That's great. And they sent stuff in, yeah. But with you know, with, you know, going back to attitude clothing, you do the you do you, you put the stint in with doing the sort of the mannequin shots and the repetition and some of the stuff they get. It's all mesh and it's all. Um, strappy things that they want ghosting as um uh, they right. want ghost images which is hell on earth when you pull out a load of sort of see-through mesh straps all over the place and they want it to look like there's no body inside and that's that's awful it's okay. hell but then the other side is you start to get a relationship and you start saying you know let's do you want me to start doing some nice um yeah, banner photos or nice website hero shots and stuff like this. We can get some interesting stuff, and they start to slowly trust you, and you start yeah. And then you know, then there's another client that I've been working for them now for quite a few, well, four years when my daughter was born, and yeah, it's just it's like future proofing yourself, but still trying to maintain the interest in what you're doing. Oh, mate, honestly, um, without blowing smoke at you too much, it's no surprise to me, Dan, that you that you've got the relationships that you have with the the people that you're working with because you know oh, thanks, it's, no honestly the the amount of enthusiasm that you've got for the stuff that you work on no matter what it is you know that it clearly pays yeah. dividends for the fact that these guys keep using you and you're still having fun and they're getting the stuff that they need out of it and i think it's, it's yeah it's, it's it's great i think yeah you know i mean it's yeah it's it comes down to the fun side and there is there's <laughs> there's half half the side of it is it's things that i've always been really really interested in and i've kind of just thought how hard do you have to push to get involved in that and to get to a point where and it does get a little bit kind of addictive so i i started and it's it comes back to the thing what i'm saying about it's it's incredible that people start to give you their time and when people trust in you and they let you do things, I'm always so appreciative. Like I started going to, um, into comedy and mm. I thought I really like comedy. And my thing was, it still hasn't pulled off yet, but I really want to photograph um, Vic Reeves. That's like my big thing. 
So I started going, right, well, I'm going to start messaging all the local comedy shows. I'm going to start going to, I'm going to start messaging all the um, comedy event organizers and stuff like that. And it didn't take long for just a tonic to, to, to respond and be like, do you know what? Yeah, we don't really have that. Yeah. Do you want to come along to some shows? Yeah. Yeah. yeah right. You know what? And then next thing, you know, it was all free stuff, but it's also for me amazing. And it's, it's great times for me. I'd rather go and have an evening photographing people that are amazing than being out in a pub in Nottingham. Yeah. So I started doing the just a tonic stuff and within, I don't know, a matter of months, I was, I was um, the in-house photographer for the event that had Phil Jupiter's, um, Harry Hill, and Whoa. some others. Who was there? So is that down at the waterfront down in Nottingham? Is it still there? Just the time? No, that, at the time it was in, it was in Theatre Royal. All oh, right. The Theatre Royal or the play. I always get the two mixed up. The yeah. one that's in the corner house. Yeah. And um, yeah, and just you know, I was. Just, they just went. We trust you now. Here you go. Hang out backstage. And just get, just get the feel of everybody. Just get the stuff. And everyone cleared off. It was just me and Phil Jupiter. Um, and um, what's the other guy? What's the other guy's name? I can't remember his name. If you cut this bit out, <laughs> he used to be, used to be quite, an, quite, used to be quite an overweight guy, and sort of just go bloody hell. I love chips. <laughs> We'll sure work it out. We'll work. I think he rings a bell. It sounds like me, to be honest with you. But be... <laughs> uh, his thing was, he'd be like, uh, just shout and be quite loutish. Did you send me a picture of him? No. Okay. I can't oh, think. Oh, you know, he's quite a big guy. I can't remember what his, what his name was. Phil oh. Jupiter's and bloody... Johnny, anyway, Johnny remember, Vegas. Johnny Vegas. Johnny Vegas. Yeah, there Vegas. we go. Yeah, yeah. Yes, 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 yes. I'm with so, you. so I was. <laughs> yeah. So it didn't take long until I was. They entrusted me just to hang around backstage, and I was with Phil Jupiter, Johnny Vegas, Harry Hill, all in one, all in one um, event card, and I was stood with them behind stage, and they just let me get on with it, and it was. Just, I just thought at that point, I thought, and. Because I was nervous and it was quite a long time ago, I took a little hip flask of brandy with me. And I was swigging hip hip flask of brandy, hip flask of brandy, whilst hanging out with these legends of comedy, and they all just allowed me to be there, and they just allowed me to, and they entrusted me yeah. to photograph them. And it's it's that thing again. It always comes back to that. That's my big thing. Humans entrusting me as someone they don't know to be stood in a room with them, photographing them. And just let me get on with it. Yeah, I, I find that an incredible, incredible experience. I can't, I can't, I can't say any more than that. Really, that that's the thing that does it for me. I think it's um, great. I think that, yeah, it's a perfect and way just, to the fact that the fact they just let me, they let they just let me do it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. But, um, it sums yeah. it up. You know, I mean, like I say, the the work that you do, the love you've got for it, the, you know, the people that you keep working with, it speaks volumes, honestly, Dan. To so yeah, the, the quality of the work that you, that you've got. Uh, you, oh, you mentioned thanks. you mentioned was it Vic Reeves or Bob Mortimer that you mentioned is the one that you need to tick off the list. Vic Reeves, Vic yeah. Vic Reeves, because yeah. I was just thinking then I was lucky enough to uh, to come to your wedding, and yeah. uh, your brother and his uh, his pals put on um, yeah uh, shooting stars style yeah. comedy panel show mm. with acts and everything else. I think your dad mm. even featured at one point, didn't he? On there, he did the he Ricky, did, yeah. Ricky Gervais dance. Yeah, on there. yeah, he did. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> that was that was um. It was an amazing that, day. It was one it of was. The, the best days I've ever had, particularly yeah, for a um, wedding. It was it was great. Yeah. It was the whole that whole thing was a massive surprise to me. The whole um, novelty island, everyone was involved. Doing novelty island, stuff. yeah, yeah. It was it was it, there was it was the one time of my life I've ever had it where. Um, all the bridesmaids and all the groomsmen and just really my, my family, were on, we're all on stage at the end because we did a sort of Beatles, all you need is love sort of singing thing. Yeah. And I think that was the one and only time where my brain has been so blown with euphoria. I remember I just turned around and I saw my mum and dad and she went, oh, and I've never had, you know, it's the, the most, <laughs> I've never had that before, mate. It was just properly just like, uh, <laughs> absolutely it was kind of all built into one big pinnacle of kind of emotional 
chaos. <laughs> it was honestly, I've been to quite a few weddings, all of which have been exceptional in their own way for a lot of good friends. But yours, I think, will definitely stay with me for for the longest time with the most standout oh, memories. It, it was, was it was amazing, and it was, it was very fun. it was it was everything that I would expect. You know, for <laughs> for you and Kim, you know, it was full yeah, of your yeah. what was it? The Mexican Day of the Dead was the the theme. Yeah, um, I've still got all that. I've still got all the Mexican flowers in the front of the car. Actually, That's uh, the, they're all on the um, the the dashboard of the car. <laughs> and you had, uh, <laughs> yeah. What was your suit? You had the uh, leopard skin lapels on your jacket, if I remember rightly. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, you got you got to do it right. It was perfect, <laughs> honestly. It really was. It was it was brilliant. Yeah, it really was. Well, good. the thing is, yeah. I mean, yeah. Kim, she's she's got the same style as me, and she's got the same opinions on artistic licenses, mate. And it's just, if you're going to do something, yeah, something like that, if you're going to go a big day, something that means a lot to you, just do what it is that you want to do and just, just, just go for it. And if, 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 if you had your wedding day, if, you know, if me and Kim had had a wedding day and it hadn't have felt like ours, yeah. we'd probably still now to this day be like, Oh, I really wish we'd just, done that bit we wanted to do i really wish do you know what i mean yeah well listen i think but, that, that that's that's everything really in terms yeah. of what you've been talking about right up to this point it's yeah. you doing well, what the, you want the, to do there and is, the things that you yeah. enjoy you know yeah well the the only last thing that there is is with the current current time what's going on is i i'm really lucky because i'm locked in the house with my wife who also does modeling for me and as a makeup artist. There you go. So this is the other thing we've got going on at the moment is a lot of the companies, I'm, I'm in the, you know, I'm, I'm talking from the Shed Studio now. I call it the Shed Studio. It's a, it's a shed <laughs> <laughs> with, with lights in it. Yeah. But um, we've got rails and rails of clothes that people have just sent to us and said, you know, if you get time over this, over this period, then, um, you know, Kim's got the look that a lot of the companies they go for mm. and we, we've we've got tons and tons of clothes and she's going to model it and she's going to do the makeup and we're just going to get we said you know the, the photos will be representative of a isolation yeah. period of our lives it's going to be restricted we're going to do stuff but it's content and it's stuff that's going to be memorable forever and we can still do it and we can still you know there's not there's not many photographers out there that also happen to be in isolation with a model and a makeup artist yeah, yeah. built into one person. So we're dead lucky. We've got loads of, we've got, we've got, we've got plenty to work on. Um, it's just trying to think of creative stuff and trying to work it around having a five month old, sorry, six month old the other day of course, and yeah. a four and a half year old. So it's more or less waiting till they go to bed at night, <laughs> get the monitor on and just have them on the monitor whilst we do creative stuff. Oh, but mate, you'll you'll you're pull it off. It. You'll pull it off. I'm sure it's not. <laughs> and I think everybody will look forward now to seeing the uh, the stuff that you put out it because you're always posting. Um, you've got a great following on on Facebook. Um, are you on Instagram as well, Dan? Yeah, I, w I went for I went for the Instagram thing. I actually really I don't know why, but I I kind of snubbed it for a really really long time, and I have just started using it now. Uh, I find it I find it quite hard work because professionally as a photographer you've got a you can't just take the picture and post it you've got mm. to take the picture on a camera edit it find some way of getting it onto software on your laptop or back onto your phone yeah so and also i find the, the square square layout yeah. very difficult yeah, yeah when you've not I, I get a lot of i do a lot of videos for companies and i'll film it in a certain way you know I'll, it's landscape landscape video layout because yeah. that's what everyone does and all of a sudden it's like can you do another version but yeah, as a square yeah it's like no because I, I planned it to have that space <laughs> in the middle for a reason <laughs> yeah i know exactly what you mean well your website again just remind me so we're forecastdesigns.co.uk is that you yeah i've got um forecastdesigns.co.uk is my website yeah to be fair i don't edit i don't update it that much because I, I find it it I find it hard to keep up with how much stuff happens a day. Of course. I find websites, for me, I find it, I don't direct people to it that much. Okay. Because it's, um, it's more the Facebook page and the, and the now, the Instagram page. Okay. Um, and trying to sort of juggle it, juggle around what I do per day 
without scaring off some clients. Uh, <laughs> You know, it's it's, oh, it's hard. I know what you mean. I know what you mean. Well, listen, mate. Honestly, this has been brilliant. It was everything that I was hoping for in terms of chatting oh, to thanks, you. Dude. Just because it's it, the reason we wanted to come to you and and chat is because I knew it would be like this. I I'm going to call myself a fan, to be honest with you, which is kind of oh, a, mate. no, no, seriously, just because of the attitude that you've got and the approach that you have with your work. I'm <laughs> I'm envious, and I think plenty of other people like me will be too. Because you, you know, you clearly love everything that you do, and I think now, oh, in, thanks, well, mate. No, you know, now in particular is a time for all of us to be trying to kind of reattach ourselves to that kind of that passion a little bit. Yeah. So uh, uh, you saying all the stuff that you have, I think, is is great. I'm not going to cut yeah. any of this. I'm going to be honest with you. It's an epic. Oh, I'm just looking at the count, and now what? We one hour fifteen. But Shit, uh, really? <laughs> yeah, yeah. Fuck. But, uh, <laughs> really? God. <laughs> but we'll. Uh, I, I think it, sorry. No, no, no! Don't be daft. It, it it deserves to stand on its own. We'll put it out there as an audio version, and then we'll we'll get a uh, a video version for people to see some of your work on, as well. And it's <laughs> it's there for people to listen to if they want to. I'm not being daft about any expectations as to who's going to watch and listen to this. You know, the whole premise of what we're doing here is we want to yeah. keep talking, and the opportunity yeah. to share and talk with people like yourself and others that we work with and and things like that is uh, yeah. is quite important. So um, oh, that's good. that's the background to it. But listen, mate, I'm gonna I'm gonna say good night. What are we on now? Half past ten. You better yeah. hope the kids haven't woken up and you've been neglecting your duties. No, I'm hiding. I'm hiding in the shed. It's beautiful. Oh, I might you stay there. Sleep here tonight. <laughs> <laughs> okay, mate. Listen, thanks ever so much, Dan. All right. Oh, thanks for letting me do it. No I, problem. It was good. It was really nice to talk about it. Good stuff, man. All right. Yeah. Thanks, dude. Speak Cheers, you later. See you soon. Ta-da. Okay. Bye, mate. Bye. bye. Check it out. My old school.